following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to our man Jim in Palm Harbor. Hey, what's going on, brother? Hey, how you guys doing today? Doing great, man. How you been? Oh, great. I really appreciate you and Tommy. You do a great job, great work, and I really appreciate it. I watch you every day. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you growling a problem with us out here, man. Let's go to uh, Sylvia in Tampa. Hey, Sylvia, how you doing? Hey, Tom. Good morning. Thank you so much for taking my call. I want to tell you thank you so much for the advice you gave me on dust yesterday. I exited when you told me, and I made a, I made a healthy profit for, That's awesome. for a very short period. So thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. So everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's making a great night, folks. Let's take a look at one of our four agreements. Always do your best, but don't overdo. When you overdo, you deplete your body and you go against yourself. It'll take longer to accomplish your goals. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 81, NASDAQ up 84, NASDAQ up 64, S&P's up 11 and a half. Gold contract down $10.80, trading at 1188 an ounce. Silver down nine cents, $14.30 an ounce. Light sweet crude up 65 cents, $72.21 a barrel. Notes and bonds, a 10-year note up one tick, 118.24, 30-year bond up five ticks, 140.22, and King Dollar. King Dollar is up 737 ticks, trading 94.510. The euro is at 116.62 to one U.S. dollar. The yen is at 113.42 to one U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at it. What do you have? We go over to the SPY. We take a look at the SPY. What do you have with the SPY? SPY traded up to a 291.91 today. Bottom line, you're off a point. And my, this market in general, this is what's pretty intriguing out here, folks. You know, you had some juice underneath this market. Um, you know, basically earlier today. Um, you know, right now, the, the Dow is up uh, three-tenths of one percent. NASDAQ is up uh, eight-tenths. S&Ps are up four-tenths. Well, earlier today, that uh, Dow's already given up half its gains. Um, NASDAQ, about uh, two, uh, one third of its gains as the NASDAQ has uh, given up uh, just slightly less than one third of its gain. So this next 60 minutes is going to be pretty intriguing. The reason being is that uh, more so, let's go over to the Dow Industrials, because of how the Dow Industrials gave it up yesterday also, and it gave it up in spades. So the Dow has just gone from a price point of 26557 and uh, bottom line is that you're down, uh, well, now we're down 100 points off of that. Now you're uh, up uh, 69 points instead of 170 points. Inside the Dow Industrials, let's see what they're doing out here, point-wise. Who's putting the juice into it? So, putting the positive points, Apple. Apple's the big number up here today. Apple's up uh, $4.62. That's putting 31 positive points into the Dow. Boeing's putting 11. United Health 9. Walgreens, 7. Taken away from it. You get Dow DuPont taking a nine points away, Goldman six, 3M's four, Caterpillar four. Nothing's too heavy, man. Uh, the, what things are going to be intriguing here uh, is a, a couple of those big dogs only have to give up a few points, and you will see that Dow go south in about a second. It's pretty amazing, actually, when you take a look at uh, the weighting structure that is inside the Dow Industrials. It has all to do with the amount of of larger stocks and larger price stocks. And all it takes is a little selling for that, and that Dow can go south in about a second. Gold contract, let's go take a look at the gold contract. They're whacking gold out here. Gold is uh, trading down uh, $11. Uh, you do have uh, volume behind this move. You have 325,000 contracts. Uh, so this is gonna challenge the uh, low. The last low that we had out here was 11.67. Uh, the high of that low is 1189. We'll find out whether it can save itself at this particular point. Now, saving itself would go like this. You're coming into the bar, but the high of the low is 1189. 
we're trading 1188. If we can get, if we can reject this number, guess what? You get a rejection of the test, and we will have lighter volume because we came off that low with 362,000 contracts, and we won't do another 35,000 contracts coming into this. Uh, uh, four o'clock close because what does happen inside the electronic contract folks is that uh, the pit closes at uh, 130 uh, bottom line is that you you get a lot of trading in the gold electronically the big time but they I can't I, I just don't see us doing another 35,000 we'll find out but it doesn't look to me like, like we're going to silver let's go take a look at the silver market silver out here uh, trading right now down seven tenths of one percent uh, silver has 83,000 contracts traded. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. And silver, the, the di differential in silver is kind of interesting because what we did have is this. We had some good volume on Tuesday. Try to get out of the range. We went up. We had 97,000 contracts traded. Pull back again. This, this is still big contract volume. You know, you get 83,000 contracts. That's big contract volume. Now, you are going into your, your low, which had 141. But bottom line, uh, on the silver market, uh, I would want to see $14.26 hold. And if we get that, then silver's going to have a, still have a chance to go higher. Notes and bonds. Bottom line, but notes and bonds still want higher price. This is pretty amazing, you know, because when you're talking supply and demand, the market itself is saying that we understand the Fed's going up on short-term rates. It's a bank-to-bank -bank rate. And we also understand that Guess what? Next year, they might be going up six more times. Well, still, you put that together, and what has happened with the 10-year note, as well as the 30-year bond, is that they've rejected lower price. The 30-year bond has rejected its May swing low and did it with light volume, came off with volume. 10-year note, same setup, meaning we, the difference in the 10-year note, we never made it to the May low. Um, bottom line, though, it broke its August low, and it had some conviction on the break. Um, that being said, what is happening now is that it's trying to get into that August low, and the number on the August low is 118.27. We made it today to 118.31, and you have some volume behind the move. Uh, we're at 118.25 now. We're going to take a look at the TLT. The TLT is kind of saying it all inside the debt market in general. And what that is, is that that did reject lower price out here today, had a sign of strength yesterday, had already tested its low from May, 5th, May 17th. It did that on the, 16th, on the 19th of September. The first test had way too much volume, and then we tested it again this past Tuesday, and it would, the volume was dramatically lower. The Tuesday, we had 6 million shares traded versus the 13.3 million. Then we came off that low with 9.5. That's, that's a nice setup. The TLT now is going to try to make it back inside the August low. And the August low, and that's where we really get a clue as to what we have happening, is at 118.07. Because as, the, as you can see, that, and it's interesting, you know, we go to the 10-year, the ETF, which is a 20-year plus, the 30-year bond. Bottom line is that the on each one of them, they trade a little bit differently, but each one of them want higher price, lower yield. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. C call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. I want to know what's going on in y'all world. In the world of TFNN, folks, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the first hour. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Jason Path, as uh, we do. And don't forget, folks, Jason kicks us off every trading day right here at TFNN, 8.30 in the morning. Morning market kickoff. Outstanding show. Jason also has an outstanding newsletter, folks. And the way you get it, you come over to our website at TFNN, and you can see right on the fe featured content, the quantitative edge with our man, Mr. Jason Path. You hit that button, bottom line, comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can go get it for a month, six months, one year, outstanding newsletter. What's going on, brother? Not much, man. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I'm doing good. Doing really good. Well, you got, we got natural gas moving. Yeah. You get the dollar going your way. The dollar's caught a bit here. Yeah. <laughs> I like how it's my way now, right? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's I'm it. it just... uh, look, listen, that, that, hey, it is what it is, man. You know? Yeah, no, like, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really, it is my way. You, yeah. You're, you're right. right. I mean, right. But, but I want our, it to go down. Yeah. Well, no, it's not a want. I think it's going to go down. You think it's going to go up. So it's, it's all right. That's what makes it's great. That's what makes the market, right? You know? Well, I think it's going to go up because it's actually going to go up, right? So I, yeah, you know, I already know right. I'm right. I, but, I, uh, totally. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, you know, definitely. Uh, and both, you know, both have moved uh, in the direction we thought. The gas thing is is fun, uh, and the dollars. I mean, we knew it would break coming out of uh, right. the Fed, and uh, I, you know, I, I, I honestly thought it was 50-50 either way there as we got to the setup because, um, you know, the the chart pattern could have been bearish. Oh um, yeah. Any dovish tilt in the dot plot, but um, you know, they confirmed what we thought. Dollar's right. breaking higher. Right. Yeah, they definitely. The dollar right now, the index right now, folks, up 26, uh, 782, you know, and when we talk ticks, folks, so that's three quarters of a penny, you know, a thousand ticks a penny. Uh, and, you know, bottom line is that it's coming into that downdraft and it has the juice to basically get higher. So um, that is going to continue uh, to put a hurting on the metals. That's what it looks like. You know, what's intriguing sure. is that it's not hitting the metal equities though it's like okay man so yeah. you know it's going to be interesting to see okay well, how is this going to shake out you know but listen the same thing what's interesting about 
all markets. And in the oil market, you get oil that's continuing higher, but yet the XLE, ExxonMobil and Chevron can't catch a bid. And so the XLE is lower. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, miners have held up for sure. Um, and, and you're right there on that. Now, over the last few months, I mean, like, you know, uh, COP has, has had a pretty good run. So you've had some you've had some better oh, yeah. appreciation in those over the last few months. Right. Um, but, yeah, you've, you've seen some dispersion in, in those. And, you know, I've looked at some relative value setups where, you know, maybe you go long miners, short gold, and just arbitrage the difference. Uh, I haven't done that, but it, you've certainly got an interesting setup for it. I think gold continues to move down. Down. And the miners have held uh, have held serve pretty well, and you know you could look at it as an interesting opportunity to hedge and just arb the relative value. But um, I don't know. Yeah, it's an interesting market today for sure. Yeah, and well, in the Dow industrials in particular, uh, you know, yesterday we gave up a huge amount of price, Jason, in the Dow. It's going to mm -hmm. be. I can't wait to see what this close looks like because we just gave up a hundred points in the Dow right before I started the program. You know, right. we were up a buck seventy. Now we're up only seventy six, mm -hmm. and that normally wouldn't be a big deal, folks. You know, you see that happen once in a while. But because of yesterday, when it gave up, it gave up almost two hundred points, uh, two right. two something from highs to lows. That's a big number. So it's like, okay, man, we get sellers in there. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, what I like to do. Can we? Uh, what I'd love to do is let's go to the natural gas market, though, because I, I yeah. think you know you've been bullish on natural gas. That's right. And when, you know, I'm looking, I'm saying to myself, you know what, man, it's just the beginning of the fall. And, and what they had out here today, folks, is that the build wasn't as much as they thought it should have been. And right. the build at this point, right, I mean, it, if, it, it should have been already much bigger than we already have, right? Is that yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like half of what it should have been today. Yes. Um, you know, my concern on, on gas this morning was, you know, do you, do you close a position? Because we've had a great ride up from, you know, the 270s oh, to yeah. you know, three-ish. Right. You saw some softness in trading this morning heading into the inventory report. And, you know, uh, so it was, was it too much too soon, too fast in terms of the rally? But we also, and we put in the letter and, um, you know, we put out a natural gas forecast every week. We had forecasted um, a bullish builder. I was I was lower than consensus. Now, to be clear, I, I don't think anybody had as low as we saw in the 40s. But um, so I thought it was a bullish build, held positions. And, you know, we've seen it tear higher here. Um yeah, that 46, I mean, that would be the equivalent of, like, you know, uh, a draw of, like, 15 million barrels of oil at this point. I mean, 46. What we is, should be in this wow. triple digits. There's previous years where this week, these next six weeks are the big build weeks before winter. It's the shoulder season where you don't really have a lot of cooling demand. You don't yet have heating demand. Okay. We should be seeing, like, 100 BCF. Like, two or three of these six weeks, we should be seeing 100 BCF. We did, like, 46 today. I know. Um, this would have been a, a you know a, a 10 12 cent move just today if we hadn't already had the ride we'd had up um so that's why you i mean you still got you know a couple of points higher today but sure. it's supportive of the move we had um so if we i mean if if next week looks anything like this week um you know it's 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 I know I'm a brokered record, man, but we are at historic lows, storage levels, and the bill just isn't anywhere close to what we need it to be. Well, no, that's why I wanted to bring it up, too, because, you know, we've been talking for a while, and that's when gas, you know, was at the, you know, 270, 280 level, you were saying that. And, you know, I think this $3, $3 level is important because it looks to me like it wants to break and get to 323. If we get to 323, folks, what happens in the gas market in general, well, then you get 4 or $5 you know, on the deal, if you get a couple cold streaks in, you know, that's right. It, you know, because gas, you know, gas hasn't been volatile for a long period of time. Gas, in general, in the futures market, folks, is called the widow maker, because it, once you get a vol, you, right? I mean, you get a volatile right. market, and guess what, folks? This thing can move beyond belief. Um, that's right. You know, well, and, and was, fundamentally, was... it makes sense to me. You know, because it's like we've been at this lower level for so long. And I guess the correlation that you just said, which, which I didn't know, which I really love. That's why I love your data so much, is that like a draw this missing this much would be like 15 million barrels of uh, oil. That's insane. 
Yeah, it was just a huge. I mean, it's literally 50 percent of what we should see this time of year in terms of a build. Right. But to, to your point on the volatility, that's why I mean, I was I thought about it a lot this morning. What we want to do with gas positions, because if we'd had a really good build this week, I think we would have lost, you know, seven, ten cents. Um, and it was it was a tough call. But again, just given the, the demand is a little higher than um typical this time of year we've had some hot spells we had the storm deal and we had yeah. to put more gas in the carolinas because it took the reactors offline etc and so you know we, we we held our positions and you know it's it was a, it was an extraordinary release for me um and to your point it was it was about 50 percent less uh if, if the if the next few weeks look anything like that it gets even wilder than i thought i like it hey stay right there all right all right man Jason and I are coming right back. Don't forget, folks, you can check out Jason every trading day right here. He has an outstanding program, Morning Market Kickoff, TFNN.com. Stay right there, folks. Jason and I come right back. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dow Industrials right now trading up 66. You get the NASDAQ up 54. S&P's up 8.5. We're talking about them, Mr. Jason Path. We are talking markets. And of course, don't forget, folks, every trading day, Jason kicks us off, morning market kickoff, 8.30 in the morning. And remember, we got a great new website, folks, really easy to get to. Just go to tfnn.com. You're going to hit Tiger TV right there. And uh, if you just want to listen to the audio, just hit Tiger TV anyway. Just uh, basically audio comes up, video comes up, all of the above comes up. Uh, as you're there, you're going to see uh, Jason's newsletter, outstanding newsletter, the quantitative edge. Just hit right on the featured 
programming, reach featured content, you hit that, great newsletter, 30-day money-back guarantee. So let's go into, um, where, where would you like to go next? What do we want to talk about? You know, bonds is, bonds uh, bonds. is really interesting Yeah, let's right talk now, about right? bonds. Yeah. I heard you talking right before I came on. Yes. I, I think that, yeah, I, I really think there's three areas of opportunity I really like in markets right now. One is energy. We've, you know, certainly talked about that at length. Uh, two is the dollar. But three really is yields right now, bonds and rates. And I think there's so many competing narratives. You see large... Um, you know, shorts and, and, and the speculative positions moving back and forth. The spread between the two and the 10 has been a freight train south uh, for a while now. And I think that now that we've come out of the Fed meeting, we've got the path confirmed. I think that trend still continues. It'll be interesting to see if it does. But, uh, you know, I still like long duration. Uh, yes. I know we've had a expansion here from, you know, we were down in the 280s a couple months ago, up to 305 on the 10-year now. But, you know, I think that spread continues to collapse. Uh, you know, I don't know if it goes inverted and, you know, we, we get that esoteric discussion going, you know, every so often. But, you know, we're at 22 basis points now between the 2 and the 10. We're at 22 and a half this morning. Yeah. That has been one of the most predictable um, trends that we've had over the last year and a half. That spread continued to collapse. We were up at 80 basis points just earlier this year, I still like that spread to collapse. I still think there's a really good trade there between the two and the 10 working on that a little bit. I was, I was been working on it this afternoon. Uh, just wanted to wait till we came after the fed to really kind of confirm where we wanted to be with that. But yes. um, yeah, I, I think there's demand for duration. I think, you know, you could short the two go along the 10 and uh, see the spread continue to, to, go down as it yeah. again as it has for a year and a half it's you know it's pretty amazing i mean in, and what happens for you folks is that you know in that aspect you hear a lot about the dot plot and all this okay and when you take a look and this is what jason would be saying you're going you're going long on you know the longer rate shot on the shorter rate and when you actually look at this dot plot for some reason yeah they they show short-term rates now the the fed folks is that's a bank to bank rate that's a discount rate that when they're going up but the fundamental aspect is that as that goes up guess what you know the longer term rates so they're supposed to push those up well when you look at the dot plot it said yeah that happens until 2021 but for some reason mm -hmm. you know traders fed all of the above expect something to be going on you know between 20 or 21 that the rates are going to go back down again so mm -hmm. it's like you can see that would be quite a run from now till uh 2020 because when you, you see when right. i put this over it what you're going to see is that they expect the um short term rate to get to 3.375 <laughs> and if that's right. the case that that two year okay is going to be like to the moon um and there's the trade i i can see it man it's and you know you know what's so intriguing too which i think that all of us have to get attuned to the markets right now folks are so much bigger than they were 20 years ago and let me just give you an idea of this in 1998 you know and the reason that, that i'm bringing this up is that you know because the, the way the dollar is trading my take is that that it's if it gets too high, they're going to have to jam it down. This is my take, fundamentally, why I think that. Because the amount of other currencies that will get destroyed mm -hmm. will end up destroying banks. They, somehow. They, it, and I'm going right back to the Asian contagion of 98, folks. Right. That's what I'm doing. So if I stay with that theme, wait do you hear this. This is, what, this is what the mind blower is, even when I look at these numbers. When long-term capital blew up, they blew up, you know, over like five billion dollars, and they blew up the banks. It's like five billion. That's we can we can sneeze that now, right? So, you know, that that was the beginning of the trade. Now they leveraged that a hundred times. That that's the, the reality. But guess what, folks? That is a tiny market compared to the markets we're in now. Right. And so I'm looking. I'm saying to myself, Wow, man, our markets are so much bigger, and they're not different. They're not different. But but if in fact that that's where we're going, meaning that the, those EM currencies are going to go downtown in a huge way again. Well, guess what? That whole Asian contagion, you know, is basically probably just laying there, you know? Right. And it just depends, okay, what country was it? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it, you know? So Yeah, well, I mean, we're seeing, you know, the shadow banking system in India is is unwinding in a pretty serious way over the last 
10 to 12 days. We've got a series of defaults. So we've seen the Sensex just okay. really take, take a hit. So we're, we're starting, I mean, I've been following that in India pretty closely. I, I, I agree 100%. I, I think India is the first really, you know, weak link in that chain on, at scale, right? Like, yeah. you know, Turkey, the Turkey situation got some headlines. The Turkey's important. You've got the Spanish banks. But, you know, you talk about a country of a billion people um, that is is facing, you know, the, they call it the shadow banking system. It really is just non-bank lenders, which are huge, huge operations in some of these developing markets. Sensex is down about 8% uh, over the, you know, the last few months. Um, and, uh a couple of largest shadow banking uh, institutions have, have had some, you know, literally had defaults on, on their own debt in the last week or so. So I, I agree with you 100 percent. I mean, there's an there's an upper theoretical limit in play. Um, I think as we as we look at the dot plot, and as you said, as we progress to that continuing hiking of shorter term rates, um, you know, it's the cycle we we typically see. The economy slows as the shorter rates go higher yes. in a slowing economy. When there is some damage, people buy duration, and all you know for a for a spread trade you need at that point is for folks to again be buying the duration, um, and and for those rates to to come more narrow and closer together. Again, after a while, you get that effect that everybody speculates on, uh, you know, is the yield curve going to invert? But it should continue to narrow as rates go up and yeah. and folks see that see that yield as an opportunity over the longer term. But to your larger point, yeah, at some point, there's a tipping point with the dollar, no question. And we could be there today. We could be there uh, really soon. Um, and, and to your point on the scale, it's it's exponentially it, well, uh, higher than than ever before. And what I was going to bring up, which I, which I failed to mention, is that when I was talking about how markets are bigger, folks, is that you got trust funds, you got state pension funds, you got big oh, pension yeah. funds, they, just to keep their um, portfolio straight, they have to buy bonds, longer term bonds, bonds in order to basically pay people in the future. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. so what that demand is huge also, you know, so it's, it's going to be so intriguing, man, you know, yeah. and, and as I'm talking with you, so the, the Dow just gave up another 45 points, folks, this is going to get so intriguing, you know, the Dow gave up everything yesterday, it's going to give it up, it's a, this is like amazing, it's like, you know, we gave up 200 and something points yesterday, it's going to be, it's already given up 130 points, hey, it is what it is. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it certainly got cause to go lower. Uh, it certainly shrugged it off for long enough. So um, we'll see. It. Well, listen, we appreciate the great education. Look forward yeah, to the show tomorrow, Thank Jason. You. Thanks Can't so wait. much, man. Thanks, Tom. Stay Take right care, there, folks. Coming right back. Dow right now is up 48. Nasdaq up 51. S&P is up 6. We'll come right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Monday, September 24th, TFNN is launching a new updated version of our website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL. Experience the new and improved TFNN website. If you're a current subscriber, don't worry, your subscription will be automatically transferred. The new TFNN.com will allow much easier access to all your account and subscription information. Get ready for the new TFNN.com, educating investors. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. 
sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials uh, right now are up 50. You get the NASDAQ up 52. S&P's up uh, 7.5. And let's get over and take a look at that Dow again, because this is so intriguing. Uh, we'll do it through the diamonds. Um, as to, you know, the uh, yesterday uh, you give it up in spades. And when I say give it up in spades yesterday, this is what had happened yesterday, folks. We got up to the price point of uh, 265 inside the diamonds, 265.84. And at uh, basically 2.30 in the afternoon, bottom line start uh, selling off, and we ended up uh, down at the 263. Um, if the, well, let me go to the Dow so you can see the, the correlation right inside the Dow because it's pretty intense. The yesterday, what you had, so the we were at uh, 26,606. We closed out and got down to 26,349. Big number. Uh, today we got up to, uh, and this is intriguing too because uh, if you actually have my book, The Out of Timing the Trade, you're going to see what, what happened is that even uh, this trend today, all it actually got that up to is where we broke down from yesterday. We got up to, uh, we broke down from 26,549 and we got to 557 today. And then the selling started once again. You know, so whoever that seller is, that's a large fund up there that's basically selling away inside the Dow Industrials. And in fact, we'll go back over there just to see what the culprit is certainly not uh yes probably i'll put boeing up it's not apple apple's still a leader out here if we put boeing up what happens in the, inside the dow is that you only need a few um that's not it's not boeing it's not boeing either so that means that there's uh internally there's there's some weakness there that uh is not just right on the top that the, the top larger one so that means that there's a lot of selling coming across all of the Dow stocks instead of just one of them. And that's more dangerous that you will come to a flat market coming into the close. Uh, into the NDX 100, let's take a look at the NDX. Strength inside the NDX 100 today, you get Regeneron up 3.8%. Mercado um, Libre is up 2.8%. INCY is up 2.4%. Uh, and you get T-Mobile up 2 Taken away from it. Uh, you get uh, Del Dollar Tree down to 2.8%. J.B. Hunt is off 2%. CTAS is down 1.8%. Uh, and Wynn Resorts is down 1.8% also. Let's go take a look at Wynn Resorts and see where we're at. So Wynn is trading 129. Oh, yeah, this, is, this is still, this is down from a, a high of 200 bucks five months ago. Yeah, this looks like it wants to make its way down to 104. Right now you're at 129. Let's go over and take a look at a couple of the banks. Um, J.P. Morgan, that's uh, down 29 cents. Now, what the banks had done is this. You know, the banks basically broke out in, last week, came back inside that area, and, you know, we'll see whether the banks want to get into lower range. J.P. Morgan, um, the, we're right at the point where it did jump higher. 
uh, in, in a higher range. That number, folks, is $114.73. We're right at that uh, number right now. If we go take a look at the XLF in general, this is what you have. The XLF is saying that banks are going lower. We are in the lower range again. Uh, as soon as it came back inside $28.45, that's saying, guess what? Do you want lower price? And we will go uh, over and take a look at Goldman Sachs, because what Goldman Sachs had done, um, that was the, and has been, the leader on the way down, going all the way back to, let me put this on a monthly, because you're going to see how this shakes out. Um, yeah, all the way up to uh, March of uh, this year. But Goldman was one of the first ones basically to uh, come off the highs, give it up. There we go. And it was the first one, 252. Yeah, there's 275. Okay, it, would all, it was also the first one in March of 2018 to give it up inside the financial sector. It, it came down, it came down hard. You did a nice counter trend bounce. You got up to a price point of 245. You know, Goldman, bottom line, looks like it's still building cars to get down to this, that 209 number. So we'll see how this shakes out because that is still, when you take a look at an aspect like that, it's like that is saying that the spreads uh, inside of the market, meaning between the 2, the 5, the 10, uh, are going to basically um, get tighten up. And that is not what banks are looking for. And if the spreads do tighten up, as, as Jason was just saying, you'd, that what ends up happening is that that is saying that going forward that the market is looking for some kind of a uh, slowdown. You know, right now, I, you know, my take is that, yeah, we're, we're, we're barreling ahead and, you know, things are pretty good. Uh, debt levels are low. You know, um, what, what you do have out here for sure is you have uh, in the um, high yield market, they, they are giving money away. There's no doubt about that. There's, there's, there's the, the amount of uh, companies that uh, they can push out there in the high yield market is pretty incredible. So, you know, that very well could be the uh, market that will get hit. Now the, now, the difference, I would say the differential in the high yield market is that that's not going to be the, the mom and pop uh, investors that got hurt because that's an, purely an institutional market. It should be anyway. I guess if you buy a high yield to the ETF structure, um, yeah, you, you could get hurt there, but um, different ball game. It's, it's certainly not like the mortgage market that uh, you have individuals that could actually get hurt uh, when that market collapses. When the high yield market collapses, most times it's going to be uh, large funds, large institutions that get whacked. And the amazing part is that they are looking for a yield that only goes three, four, five percent more, but three, four, five percent more in this type of market without collateral, because that's how they, those high yields come out, which is amazing. Uh, it's pretty amazing. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. XAUHUI, let's take a look at it. Uh, so, it went gold getting hit. Uh, bottom line is that uh, XAU rejected lower price out here. You know, we went down to a price point of 63.80. You're at 64.59. You're coming into the strength that was established out here as we come off the bottom on the 12th. And if we go take a look at the GDX, because what happens is that with the XAU, as well as the HUI, um, you don't get uh, the amount of volume until about 8 o'clock at night. So what we do get volume on is the GDX. And what you're going to see is that the GDX today back down to a price point of $18.14. That got into the high of its strength, rejected it, and we're going to get a rejection uh, with tremendously lighter volume. That's a setup that we still want higher price. So this is going to be wild watching this whole thing shake out uh, because it's, it's pretty impressive, actually, uh, that gold can get whack like this in a day. And, you know, percentage-wise, it's not that it's a, a big percentage move, you know. Uh, bottom line is that, you know, you, you, it's, it's a move uh, down of uh, nine-tenths of one percent. You know, but bottom line is that that would be different if it's a one-day occurrence, what we have had in the gold market is gold really has, has not been able to catch a bid since April, okay? So it catches a bid, doesn't get a follow-through. Catches a bid, doesn't get a follow-through. Uh, so in the aspect of how uh, the GDX is holding up, it's pretty good. Um, Barrick Gold, Barrick Gold, uh, bottom line, rejected lower price out here. Had light of volume, filled the gap. Let's see, did we get to 1063? 
Okay, I'm almost 1072. Would have been nice to get the 1063. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. We have the uh, Dow Industrials uh, right now trading up uh, $52, 52. Nasdaq up 49. S&P's up seven. We'll come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now up 55, NASDAQ up 52, S&P's up 8. Let's go take a look at the uh, S&P, the SPY, through the SPY. Uh, SPY right now, folks, uh, traded up to 291.91 and gave it up again on price. Uh, bottom line is that uh, you're off that by buck 30. You're going to do lighter volume than yesterday. Light of, yesterday, we gave it up on price also. Uh, we had volume of 79 million. Now, this is a typical way that you try to test highs can handle price and then you come off and we'll just go through this okay so in the spy what you had is this you had a high volume high nice move that was on the 20th of september we went 293.94 the low of that was 291.23 so that's a high volume high at 100 million shares traded has to be tested well guess what folks we tested it yesterday we did it with 79 million and that what the test was there is that it tested the low of the high. It tested the bar. So yesterday what you had, you had 79 million shares. Going into 100, it failed on volume, failed on price. This is where you, you, you can build more evidence. Today, what do we do? You go high, you, you go higher, 
not from yesterday, but you go high, 292.24. You give it up on price. Now what ends up happening, which is pretty intense, you have 46 million shares. Now they'll throw, they'll throw I suspect, a 20 million into the close here. Um, but guess what? You're still going to have a failure in price, a failure in volume. And as you look at the market, you can see that the market is more tired, less energy each and every time it's trying to get higher. Why? Because there's less buyers. That's how this shakes out. Small caps. Now, small caps gave away its hand yesterday. Small caps went south with volume. S small caps still say saying south. Bottom line, small caps IWM is looking to trade to 162.26. You're at 168 right now. So bottom line, you can expect there's going to be more trouble in the small caps. And the small caps seem to be the indice that is going to give it up first. Stay right there, folks. Lots of numbers coming out after the close. We have the Dow Industrials uh, trading up 72. Not going to give it up. Dow, uh, NASDAQ up 57, S&P's up 9. We'll come right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Oh, look who oh we have. it's a beautiful day. Look at our man, Jim from Minneapolis. We are taken by storm. Taking it by storm, baby. <laughs> I love that. That's a great saying, man. Hey, what's happening, brother? Good morning, gentlemen. How you guys doing today? Good, man. Yourself? Oh, man. It's been the most incredible couple of days since when I called in on Friday. Litecoin busted out of that consolidation on the two-hour chart. Okay. And it just never looked back. It did a 100-point ABC up, and now it's very extended the way I look at it. Yeah. But Holy camo! I mean, it went up to four hundred and twenty dollars last night. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go ten hours a day. We go twenty-four hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks. Whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. We're kicking into fall. You're gonna love it. Love is responsible for its actions. Everything you think, everything you do has a consequence, and you're gonna experience the consequences of your action in one way or another. All human beings are completely responsible for their actions, even if they don't want to be. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials traded up 54, NASDAQ up 51, S&P's up 7.5, gold contract down $11.60, trading at 11.87 an ounce. Silver, down 12 cents, $14.28 an ounce. Light sweet crude, up 65 cents, $72.23 a barrel. Notes and bonds, you get the 10-year note, up one tick. Trading 118.25, 30-year bond up four ticks, 140.21. King dollar, King dollar caught a bid, folks, up 787 ticks, trading 94.560. King dollar is going to try to get into this larger trading range once again, dropped into the lower trading range about four days ago. Euro, the, the euro is at 116.50 to 1 U.S. dollar. The yen is at 113.38 to 1 U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877. 9276648. Give us a call, folks. 
Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have out here, folks? Well, what you have is this. You get markets that are higher. That being said, you had the uh, S&P as well as the Dow Industrials basically give it up on price. Uh, they tried to get to a higher high. Um, they came up and into close to the highs of yesterday. And yesterday, folks, what ended up happening when the Federal Reserve uh, came out with the statement, we had markets go higher first, and then the S&P as well as the Dow Industrials gave it up on price. If we take a look at the SPY, what you're going to see is this. The SPY yesterday traded up to a high of $292.24. Then, bingo, you gave it up. You closed out at $289.88. We did volume there of $79 million. Now, what that was doing, that was testing its high volume high. It tested the low of the high. Bottom line, got into it, couldn't handle it. Today, what do we do? You do 54 million shares versus the 79 million from yesterday versus your high volume high of 100. That's showing that the market is weak, and you can see how the, how the weakness basically gets done. Your first high, you had 100 million. You tested that yesterday with 74, 79 rather. Today it tries to get higher, you get 54, gives it up on price. That's saying that the SPY wants lower price. We go take a look at the Dow Industrials, and it's the same setup inside the Dow Industrials, which is going to get intriguing here. The Dow yesterday, from highs to lows, gave up some big numbers. We went from 26,606, and we closed out at 26,385. So you can see, you know, you came down 221 points from the high. Today, what we did, not, not that bad, but bottom line is that you had a high out here today of 26,557. Bottom line, what did you end up happening? Well, you came off of that number, and we came down 118 points. Um, it's a big number, you know. So bottom line is that you got a couple sellers inside the Dow Industrials. Uh, the indice that basically showed the, its hand the best of what kind of a market we have happens to be the, the Russell 2000. Uh, Russell 2000 yesterday came down and came down with volume. Um, bottom line, broke swing points, did all of the above. Yesterday we did the volume of 17 million, closed out at 167.78. Uh, uh, today you get a sideways move in the market. Bottom line, uh, where the indices were higher, uh, the, the Russell 2000 couldn't move. Uh, the Russell got out of its larger range once it closed under the $170.20, which was the high going back to June 20th. What does that mean? That means your probability gets pretty high that we're going to go to 162.26. So that's quite a number, and we'll see how this uh, rocks and rolls uh, in the next few weeks. But uh, the small caps look like they want lower price. Let's go to the oil market. So oil, gasoline, of course, none of us buy barrels of oil, but we got to pay attention to barrels of oil. Uh, that was up another nine-tenths of one percent today. Uh, when we take a look at that, you know, you get a sideways move up here. You, you're out of the range, meaning the range is approximately $71. Yeah, $71.10, meaning that's the lower range. You're up at the higher range. So the more, longer we stay up here, the, the more probability is it can bust into the price point of $75. Now, let's go to the gasoline market uh, and the heating market, which affects each and every one of us. So we start with gasoline. You're going to see gasoline today was up. 1.1%. Uh, Wholesale now, which we're trading uh, 208 a gallon. Bottom line, this looks like it's going to run to 211 a gallon. That's how this is uh, shaken out. We go the, so that's your gasoline, and it, it, you can see that's the pump price. Uh, wholesale folks, that's going to basically come in, and we're going to be paying more at the pump. We take a look at the heating oil market, which of course in the you know in the West, in the Midwest. Uh, in the Northeast, that, this is going to affect you. Um, you guys could be in trouble. Uh, this is what it is. So heating oil, folks, trading at 231 uh, wholesale. This is wholesale. Uh, and what that has done is this. Anything over 229, you broke into a new range. And this is not too cool because looking at this, 211, that's saying you can add almost another 19 cents. That's pretty intense. That'll get you up to uh, 249. Let me put this on a continuous. H O H O one. So let's put this on a continuous contract and see where we're at. And what the differential is when I put it a continuous contract, folks, is that it just means that you, they tie technically. I'm tying tying these 
contracts together just to see, oh, interesting, to see what's above us. Okay, so, yeah, this is serious business. Hey, heating oil wise, you better, I, I would, I would, if you're, if you're, if you need heating oil right now, I'd go get it, folks. Um, the reason being is that we're, two we're 231 wholesale. The wind hasn't started yet, and this can go to 270 in about a heartbeat. And that is monster money, because I remember when I was living in South Boston, bottom line is that we heated by oil. I had oil tanks, and when you fill those up, you can feel that number in a monster way. There's no two ways about it. So um, fill the babies up, because it looks like that wants higher price. Notes and bonds, folks, bottom line, they still want higher price. Tested the lows, rejected them, come off the lows with good vol. TLT wants higher price, 10-year wants higher price, 30-year wants higher price, lower yield. Stay right there, folks. We'll be coming back with our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. We're going to be talking markets. Dow Industrials finished up 54, NASDAQ up 51, S&P's up 8.5. We'll come right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We had the Dow Industrials finish up 54, NASDAQ up 51, S&P's up 8.5. Let's go to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the second hour. Don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show every trading day right here at TFNN, 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. You can come over to our website at TFNN. 
Hit news newsletters. Check it out. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Outstanding newsletter. Basil Chapman, what's going on, brother? Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Good, man. Yourself? Very good. I'm just wondering, uh, any relation to this person right here? Look at this. Construction on Boston's biggest office tower in decades. Poised to start next summer after the project attracted a major new investor, car properties of Washington, D.C., taking 50% stake in one Congress, a 1 million square foot, 528 foot skyscraper proposed for a top part of the government center garage. The investment will put developers in position to start work in 2019 and to open the building in 2022, said Tom O'Brien, managing partner of HYM Investment Group, which is leading the project. Look at that. What a ride. Isn't that interesting, huh? I love it. <laughs> Now, That's look a beautiful at, look building. at that building. Oh, my it's God. It's a beauty. Yeah, I mean, I've always loved the John Hancock. I actually saw them put it up. I've got pictures of it as the world's tallest plywood building. You remember the windows were breaking? I do. And they had to take all the windows out and replace them. I've got I, pictures. I used to live in the bank bay at the time, and I've got pictures of the whole thing. And uh, I love the building. I, I've always disliked the Prudential building, but this is a beauty. Look at it. That is gorgeous. You want to hear a crazy story, folks, in Basel. This is, this is, this is now, this, what this shows is that how fast technology can go and bring us fast forward. When the Prudential Center, so picture in Boston, folks, the Prudential Center, when I went to service, which was in 68, the Customs Building was one of the biggest buildings in Boston, and right. the, Pruden the, Pruden the Prudential was there, and I think the John Hancock, they were just built also, okay? No, uh, Prudential was in the 71, 72. Uh, no, it would have been before that, because... Oh, well, that's when it was started, so it might have been started earlier. Oh, you mean yes. John Hancock? Yeah. John, John Hancock. I'm sorry, the John, John, John Hancock. Hancock, yeah. yeah. Prudential because, was earlier. Because, yes. yeah, this is about the Prudential. So that's what... Wait, you hear this. This is a crazy story, folks. What happened is that when the Prudential got built, the garage that... The parking garage was owned by Fitz Inn. He was a... Uh, Fitzgerald was a... Basically, a big parking lot owner. Well, you know how they... The Prudential folks... Uh, all the stairs were outside. Right. And, 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 and guess, covered, yes. And guess what, folks? When it snowed, do you know how they, they cleaned that place, folks? They cleaned that place with people shoveling snow. Shoveling. Oh. So, Peck, check oh. this out. I was like 10 or 11, and my uncle worked for Fitz Inn, so I'd get a job there, and we would shovel snow for weeks at a time, weeks at a time, to get it out. And when I think about that, and it was a great job. It was a great job, by the way. But when I think about that, Basil, it's like, are you kidding me? Like, and, and, and so picture this, folks. What happens is that, you know, you get snowblowers and all that now. And they had snowblowers at that time. But they weren't, they knew that they could get a bunch of kids and shovel that thing out quicker. Isn't that a right. sick story? And oh. we, we all loved it. Everyone, you know, there's a bunch of us from South Boston. We knew if it snowed, man, okay, great. We're going to go make some money at the Prudential uh, because they paid us big money. I mean, I think, the, <laughs> That's great. you know, when we say big money, it's like two yeah, bucks an hour. It was. Yeah. That was good, yeah. Crazy. Hey, so yeah. well, let, let's, uh, I'm going to have to keep you for a couple segments. The, 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 let's go back to this picture for a second because oh, sure. I know, you know, I, People ask me about real estate all the time. Of course, we were in the real estate market big down here. I was in the real estate market in Boston. And the differential to me, Basil, is still to this point, is that we still cash flow down here in a big way. Now, in South Boston, folks, they don't cash flow. Everything's 600 bucks a foot. No way. You oh, can't yeah. make it. You yeah, can't. No, I mean, well, you we, we, we live, it. forget you, it. You can't buy a closet for $2 million, right? I mean, forget it. So... Now, looking at this building, I know that you love to do workshops, right? Right. Um, so it's going to be intriguing, right? Do we get a new building like this? And like, okay, so Boston's going to come in dates, and take a it's hit. It's giving you, right, it's giving you everything. But you know what's interesting? In Florida, you went through, uh, basically, it was, it was virtually like a depression uh, when, in, uh, from 2008. I mean, oh, the, yeah. the real estate yeah. was... So we didn't experience that, you know, 10, 15 percent, maybe in some properties, maybe 20 percent majority, really just oh, that's in, yeah, the price right. is held. We haven't had our, our 1991, 92, uh, okay. 40 percent, 50 percent. So I'm watching this decline. I'm watching this very closely. That's interesting, man. Yeah. So so you didn't go down like, see, what Basil was talking about, folks in Boston, there was a there was a real estate that went down 50 percent in 
You know, when the banks folded in, in the, yeah, the New England right. area, then so th just, that this one here, you didn't do a forty percent uh, pullback. No, nothing even close. Okay. Right. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, interesting. Oh, okay. So let's get to the markets. To, to the market. Okay. So I'm looking at the Dow. Um, I actually had a signal yesterday for subscribers I intraday, as I said, if the Dow goes underneath twenty six thousand four hundred fifteen after uh, two o'clock. We want to go short. We did go short. We actually got stopped out. I'm sorry we did, but I think Apple added so much to the Dow today that today it, just did. Hit, yeah. it just hit our, our stop. We were short the dog, just one to one a position there. Very small loss, less than 1%. But I'm sorry that we got out because I, I think that we've got a very choppy sideways to down market for a little while coming here. And so that's the Dow. And the Dow, if it breaks under, it's at 26,439. You can see a little doji candle at a peak D right there, 26,769, all time high. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, digestive phase should come. And I think that if 26,327, which is the 14 period moving average, if there's a close below that, then I feel convinced that we've got a little time. I'm not so sure yet about price because of this rotation through today. You know, today could have been actually quite an ugly day if Apple wasn't really leading yeah. to the upside for the techs. So I, I don't know yet because... Another stock could take take the leadership position. So, you know, and Boeing looks a little tired here. I think it's got one little pop to the upside. Then it might pull back. So, so it's the Dow we're looking at. But in the meantime, we did go long. I told you, I think, last week that we were looking at sectors. I like to get my subscribers into a sector that looks like it's kind of oversold. It had a big run, then it was ready to move. So we're all along the steel sector with the steel e uh, S uh, SLX, okay. which is uh, trading up about two points from where we bought it. Um, about uh, that was on the 13th of September. We had a really nice gain. I've taken some of it off for subscribers in AKS, which is AK Steel. We got it at 436 and it's trading at $4.82. That's a nice gain. And it still looks pretty strong because I, I, I said get out of the steel sector all the way from that August pullback. I said tariffs, I want to see some profits. Now I think there's a chance that some still could actually start to do something very positive in terms of earnings. We'll see if that happens. So AK Steel is a very low-priced one, but it's performing well, and that's yeah, very that's nice. Yeah, that's a great trading stock, too. It is a great trading yeah. stock. And then we're still along the IBB from the 110s. We've had it for quite a while, trading at 121 right now. Still along the UTX position. Um, Part of it, it's at 140. We're in in the 119 area. And we did go short once again, the semiconductors. And I've been talking about this for some time, saying I think the semis are a kind of a heads up to say there could be a pullback if they start to pull back sharply. So they pull back a little bit, but at 106, if the SMHs break 104 in the next two weeks, that's a big problem. Hey, just stay with me for another uh, segment, sure. all right? Awesome. Stay right there, folks. Basil and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials finish up 54, NASDAQ up 51, S&P's up eight and a half. Basil and I are gonna be coming right back, folks. Hi, folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank, and get the type of interest they receive. Instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics, including gold, silver, platinum, 
copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Talk with our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. We are talking markets. And don't forget, folks, you can listen to Basil every trading day right here at TFNN, 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. He also has a great newsletter. The opening call, come over to our website, check out the opening call, 30-day money-back guarantee. Okay, so uh, let's see. We got uh, Sitas, right? Yes, I thought what I'd do is just kind of give you an overview of what I'm looking at as what could possibly go wrong. Everybody knows what cool. could go right. Yes. So I have a, what I've called a, an index. Of course, Dave White would be the first one to say using four stocks as an index is nuts. You need at least 30 or 50, but that's not the point. The point is I've chosen four stocks. I chose them a little while back, called it an index. just because it's something I'm following real closely. I call it cash and C is for Syntas, A is for Amazon, S is for the SPY, the S&P 500 trading vehicle, and the H is for Home Depot. And I think that kind of covers nice. a broad sector of the market. Yeah. Syntas is a corporation. You know, you'll see the little trucks driving around, oh, overalls, yeah. uniform rentals, and that sort of thing. And I've always used it as a kind of a tell. It's usually late on the upside when the market turns down. People don't know that it's turning down, so they're still renting. So it lasts a little longer on the upside, and on the downside, it turns close to the bottom. So, that, so I'm watching it closely. So it goes to in the Chapman wave. The peak F is where I'm always looking to say, okay, be real careful. At 217.34 on the 7th of September, it, it goes to an all-time high. Then it kind of goes sideways, and I'm keeping my eye on it because if you look on this left side chart, the daily, look at the way the stochastic as the MACD is moving average convergence, divergence, two moving averages, cross negative way back in mid August and just kept going down, yet the price yes. very slowly went up. That's a, a divergence. Sometimes it doesn't mean anything because the, the MACD turns up and then the price goes higher. But in this particular instance, it kind of stalled, and then the stochastic kept going lower and lower. All of a sudden, they come out with news uh, three nights ago, and evidently, uh, we looked at it this morning. I had a call, and we were looking at the news. Uh, the, the news, they earned about the same, but maybe that was disappointing. But other news was quite good. I thought they were talking about the outlook. No, nothing there about the outlook. So this is price disappointed. When price disappoints, that's different to an outlook, because an outlook means we're doing well. We should continue doing well as long as the outlook hopefully changes. But... We're at least doing okay in this particular instance, regardless of the outlook, the price has deteriorated terribly. It's gone from 217 to almost the low today of 197, and that is just in a couple of weeks. That's really bad. And, you know, see yeah, that's a great point, Basil. And you know, this thing, folks, came down on, on volume too. Now, granted, you know, the last the only time it ever ever had a pullback as the market, it was in February. You know, it's like that, I'm <laughs> looking at this chart. I mean, this chart, this is Look an equity folks rate. that started at uh, seventeen dollars and uh, you know, basically, and did hit a high of 217, so uh, right. pretty intense. But look at the monthly. This is the first big red candle. Yeah. You've had two little red candles somewhere there in July of 2016. That, huh? This is the first 
really, I mean, this is yeah. an amazing chart. This You could have bought this and just gone off on a world trip and forgot about everything else. And, okay. and the cool so, thing about this equity, what Basil was saying, folks, is that this equity here, you know, it's not an equity that makes money just on large companies. It makes money across everywhere. the country on small companies, middle companies, and large companies. I, I remember this company, I used to... Uh, get my mats off them when I had the pizza place in 1976. <laughs> yeah, they go back a long time. Right. This is nothing to sneeze at. This is quite serious for this particular company. So that's number one. So we go to Amazon. So Amazon was disappointing for the last couple of weeks. And then all of a sudden today, uh, it, it pushed quite high. It's very close to the all-time 20, 50.50 all-time high. Back on the 4th of uh, September, it had a 2013 round number, which was a clue to say, hey, be careful. But my, my reasoning with the round numbers is if this closes above 2013, there's a chance it could go back to the all-time high. So out of the two, one's deteriorated terribly, and one did pull back a little bit, but now it's almost back to the highs. Now right. we go to the SPY, and the SPY, you were talking about a little earlier, this is starting to weaken. Eric, look at these three candles with these long-legged dojis, the long-legged wicks. Yeah. It kept three days. It's tried to rally, and it's kept pulling back to the 14-period moving average. And the MACD and stochastic are weak in the daily. And the month, the weekly and monthly charts are still very good at this particular point. So I'm watching this very closely because at 290, if there's any trade for a day or two that goes into, say, the two under 289.20, which is just a dollar and a half away, I think it's at least a short-term top. Then you get Home Depot, and Home Depot, of course, is just everywhere. I mean, this is this is whether there are, there are hurricanes, storms, whatever it is. Home Depot has been the beneficiary for a long time. Also, the monthly chart is extremely good. Weekly chart has just made a peak. It's pulling back. But it is starting to deteriorate technically. So I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, okay, keep an eye on this and put it together with what you were talking about a moment ago, the TLT which made a trough E, but if I do the TBT, which is like the mirror image, this is the inversion, this is the ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury bond ETF. Okay. Look, it's made some kind of a top that you gotta respect because the MACD's turning down a little bit, still good. Stochastic's now gone 80, 80, under 80% and it's pulled back from the 39.07 high. So I'm watching this. My reasoning has been, and this could be wrong, but we haven't had a test of it yet, is that when the yields start to come down because bonds are being bought. It could be because people are getting a little nervous about the stock with the volatility. Volatility, volatility always means selling. Yes. The volatility in the market. And that means that maybe money will come out of stocks at some point, at least in the short to intermediate term, and go into bonds. So I'm watching all these different things as Yeah, clues. just so they can get their money back. Now, you know, I mean, it's intriguing, you know, if people, if you have been in the market for a long period of time, it's like, okay, is the market going to go up forever? Listen, it might. Uh, the other side of that, I think what Basil is saying, which I totally agree, is that, you know, some people say, okay, I want some safe money now. And the difference in the bond market is, you know, most times folks, of U.S. Treasuries notes, they're definitely safe. That's one of the safest things oh, well, you can get. Well, one of the things also is the euro, uh, the euro and bonds, people just have no idea how much money is involved. It's right. way more money than oh. the stock market. That yeah. is big. It's huge. So, um, so those are the clues for me that I'm looking at. So I think choppy to down in, in the in the stock market. The Dow was the, the laggard. I think it's going to start pulling back here. You can see that the IWM is very weak, the small caps. So this is a very select time. And I've been saying for a little while, raising some cash, I don't think is a bad idea. <clears throat> yeah. And this time of the year, too, it's, it is, it's pretty intriguing. There's no doubt. Yeah. Well, listen, we always appreciate the education, Basil. Hey, so what's the weather like up in Boston right now? Well, as soon as we're done, I've got some people waiting for me for tennis. So we're awesome. still playing outdoors, but it's starting to, we will get cold very soon. Oh, yeah, but it, this is like the best, I mean, the fall in Boston's gorgeous, right? Yeah. Well, it was a lovely day because it wasn't humid. It was, yesterday was very humid. Really? Today's still? not. Interesting. Yeah. We had, well, we had a strange day. It was... Um, when you open the door, the heat from the, the humidity made the, the, all the windows and the doors, all the glass. You got, uh, you got the, um, the dew. Um, condensation. I right. love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah we're used to that down You're here. You're used to that, but at this time of the year, we don't. This is unusual, right? Yeah, I love it. Okay, man, you have a great one to safe one, Baz. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. Have a great evening. Thank you.
The uh, market lies out here, folks. Uh, bottom line is that uh, you had the Dow up uh, 54, Nasdaq up 51, S&P is up uh, 10. Uh, gold contract, uh, gold might have a tough day tomorrow, folks. We're down uh, 12 bucks going into a Friday. King dollar caught a bid. That was up 832 ticks. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Monday, September 24th, TFNN is launching a new updated version of our website. You can still visit us at the same tfnn.com URL, and starting Monday, you'll be able to experience the new and improved TFNN website. If you're a current subscriber, don't worry, your subscription will be automatically transferred. The new tfnn.com will allow much easier access to all your account and subscription information. Get ready for the new tfnn.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials are right now uh, traded up 54, NASDAQ up 51, S&P's up uh, 10 and a half. Uh, let's go over and uh, take a look at uh, a couple of the uh, advertising companies out here. So uh, you got Inter uh, Republic that closed at twenty-two dollars and seventy-nine cents. Um, and let's see what we have here. Okay, so what is the second one? OMC Omnicom. Oh, um, that. Closed down two dollars. That's trading out at a price point of sixty-eight twenty-one, and this is going to get interesting. I'm in Dave White. Just give me a heads up here. So intraday out here, folks. Uh, what this equity did? This is pretty dramatic, actually. Oh, I see. It did it right at the close too. So at the close, it went from a price point of sixty-nine dollars uh, to sixty-eight twenty-one. Look at this. It's breaking out lows. Let's pull this back. Okay, so we take a look at 
Okay, so this has been consolidating out here from November of 2013. It has high volume lows laying at 65. Going to come into that with volume. And let's see what they have to say. The Wall Street Journal. Okay, so what's the Wall Street Journal saying here? Come on, where are you? Okay, so Wall Street Journal uh, is saying U.S. prosecutors are probing the ad industry. Let me get this. Advertising giants uh, Interpublic, Omnicom, uh, and WPP uh, tumbled into the close as the Wall Street reported that federal prosecutors that have opened an investigation to media buying practices in the advertising industry and have begun uh, issuing subpoenas as part of that probe. Uh, subject of the investigation is non-transparent ad buying practices, including agencies receiving rebates from media outlets, according to the report. Uh, one ad company reportedly under scrutiny um, in the investigation is Harvest, the ad company owned by media corporation uh, Venditti. Um, bottom line, folks, is that they... <laughs> You're going to see some big, let me pull this back here for a second. You're going to see some monster problems in this, in this whole deal. Because what, what I've seen in the ad, ad industry um, in general, so, so picture this. You know, we've been in this business since 1994. And when I say in the business is that the business, our business model is an advertising model for you know, to companies, and then subscription-based model newsletters, right? Well, the advertising part of the model, you know, and picture that we had that radio station up in New Hampshire, great station, so we understand advertising quite a bit. Now, when I say understand advertising quite a bit, we're in, we're in like a, a, a raindrop in this business, right? Because what, ha what, what does happen is this, is that the large advertising agencies own everything. And the large advertising agencies, the, everything gets run off of a spreadsheet, okay? So that spreadsheet gets run off of, and this, is, this goes all the way back to basically um, Nielsen ratings, uh, ratings on radio stations, all of the above. Those ratings, number one, when you see how they get done, blow my mind, and always have. But guess what? The structure that was built, and was and this structure wasn't the fault of just the uh, advertising companies, because this is this is how this thing kind of shook out. So I suspect when advertising really started in the 50s, okay, that more than likely that advertising and large companies that they went hand in hand and. You know, you see those old TV shows, and it started, and it probably started like that, and it was legit at the very beginning. And I don't know how many years that went on. But I can tell you from personally being in it is that what happened and still happens, and well, it, it actually, I'll tell you the end of the story, uh, the, the why that they're going to be investigating, why they're going to get caught at this whole deal, um, is that as time went on, because... There was so much money in it, and because it was third-party checks, and third-party checks means specifically that you had the Procter & Gamble's of the world, you had these huge companies of the world that had to put money into advertising. You had the advertising companies that they depended on, and then they rolled up all the advertising companies. The advertising companies basically ran off spreadsheets, and they made a certain percentage of the gross buy. Then the internet comes in. As the internet comes in, bottom line, digitally start coming in. The advertising companies fought digital for a long period of time. They opened little subsidiaries first, okay? Then what ends up happening, one of the first subsidiaries that ever opened to, by the way, which is really wild, was in Cambridge. It was actually in Harvard Square. Um, guess what? Microsoft ended up buying them, okay? But bottom line is, as we keep going forward, what you're going to see is that you had the um, agencies open then their small little digital advertising companies got monster because digital got so big. Then what happened is this, is that Procter & Gamble figured out about two and a half years ago, saying, you know what, 
I think we're paying all this money and we're really not getting what we're supposed to get. So what Procter & Gamble did is that they got together with the other big advertisers. They put a group together, they start spending money. You see, you're, you're spending all this money. Are we really getting what we're supposed to get? Now, I don't know what this investigation is about, but that was the beginning of the end for large advertising agencies to turn around and work on a basis of percentages. That's how this thing has kind of been shaken out. So it's going to be intriguing. I haven't read the story yet. Um, you know, I, think I want to thank Dave for putting it in the den. Uh, but I suspect uh, there's going to be big problems. And, and what, it's, what it's more than likely, the folks that have the best information are the largest advertisers. And they just get fed up with it. It's intriguing, though, how long that it actually takes when someone gets fed up with someone to get down to the, to the point that now something's going to be done about it. You know, and I think they're probably in big trouble, you know, and it probably has to do with the aspect that they very well could be charging these large agencies huge amounts of money. Um, and, you know, when you're, you're going, you hit the Internet button, you're, you're up on the first page. Um, it always it always blew my mind that um, advertisers in general would have to pay um, so much money just if it, the ad even popped up, you know, because that doesn't make any sense to me, you know. Hey, we'll see where it shakes out, but the business has changed pretty dramatically, and the business is an electronic business now in a huge way. Advertisers want to know how many people are listening, where they are. They don't want to be below the fold. If you're below the fold, folks, bottom line, you know, it's just not there. But guess what? There's such a turnover on large companies that hadn't affected them in the past. The differential, I would say, is that these young guys and women getting out of school now, they know the Internet up down, upside down. They grew up with it. They're saying, hey, what do you mean I'm going to sign a check for fifty, dollars $100,000, $200,000 um, going over, you know, and basically I'm below the fold. Doesn't make any sense. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow Industrials up 54, NASDAQ up 51, SP's up 10 and a half. We'll come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. 
With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, if we go take a look at uh, some of the uh, higher volume stocks out here, uh, what you have is this, is that we had uh, Advanced Micro up 40 cents. Uh, Geron Corporation, unfortunately, that uh, fell apart. They uh, uh, no longer have a deal with J&J. &J. That uh, stock was down uh, six to eight, well, 65 percent. Uh, GE is still in big trouble. That's a uh, trade in 11.53. That has got into the uh, high of the low of 2008 and does have that volume. Uh, Facebook was up a buck 89. That still wants to go to 149 dollars. You're at 168. That gave it up on price today. Uh, Square, Square's big numbers. Uh, Square is up 13, uh, three dollars and 31 cents today. Trading 97.96. Um, you got Conagra brand, that was down 10%. Uh, uh, bottom line is that that wants lower price. Uh, Amazon, we take a look at Amazon. Amazon's going for its highs once again. Amazon uh, was up uh, $38 today at uh, 2012. Uh, the high is 2050. I expect them would likely we're going to see it eat right into that bar uh, tomorrow uh, into higher price. Uh, Facebook, different ball game. That's just the opposite. Facebook, uh, 149 is coming at you. Facebook, just can't handle higher price. You get lots of sellers in the equity. Uh, you're at 186. It's down from uh, $218, and that's going to be quite a hit um, when, when all said and done. Oil market, uh, bottom line, folks, uh, inside the barrels of oil look like 75s on the agenda. The gasoline market, it looks like we're going to be paying more money for gas at the pumps. And for you folks that need heating oil, you got to really do some uh, thinking uh, if you want to get those tanks full because. Uh, what you do have right now, uh, inside the uh, heating oil market, you're at $2.31 per gallon. It's a, it's a big number. Uh, that being said, this was a major break topside, and it does, it does have the uh, juice behind it. And the way that uh, that baby uh, looks like, it looks like you're going to be running at about the uh, two fifty dollars a gallon. And that's wholesale, by the way, so I don't even want to think about uh, what the retail price is, whether it's on the Midwest uh, up in the east. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about, whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it, take ownership of it, fly with it. Thanks for being here, folks. Have a great night, safe night. Look forward to talking with us, being with us tomorrow. Jason, 8.30 in the morning. Wow! Go get them, folks. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using its kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts, allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com.